Hello, my name is Dennis, and welcome to my Trailer Park White Trash Mobile Home Kitchen. I really do live in a mobile home, in a trailer park, and this is my kitchen. One of the first recipes I posted on my website, in fact it was the second recipe I posted, was that of almond biscotti. And then one year later I was wondering what to do to celebrate the, my first anniversary of my website, and I just happened to have a recipe and video in the vault for cherry pistachio biscotti. So I, th I got the idea, why not do biscotti every anniversary of my website? So this year, I'm going to be doing something that is unusual. I'm going to experiment with this. I don't have a recipe for it. I'm kind of basing this on my other biscotti recipes, that of doing coconut and pineapple biscotti. It should be interesting. We'll call it Hawaiian biscotti. So let's get into the ingredients I'm going to be using for making my Hawaiian biscotti. If you're hearing any buzzing in the background, that's my neighbor who was mowing his entire lawn with a gas-powered string trimmer. Something you would normally use for weeds, but it's a trailer park, folks. Okay, so what am I using here for ingredients? I have four cups of all-purpose flour. I weigh my flour when baking, so this is 20 ounces or about 570 grams of all-purpose flour, one and three quarter cups, about 330 grams of sugar, one cup, 86 grams of rolled oats. This is today what they're calling old-fashioned oats. Then I have one and a half teaspoon of baking powder and one teaspoon of baking soda. If you don't know the difference, baking soda and baking powder both have as their basic ingredient bicarbonate of soda. Baking soda has no acid source in it. It uses the acid in the food to make the carbon dioxide buzzle, bubbles rather that give you your leavening. Baking powder has acid added to it, typically something like um, cream of tartar to provide the acid for the bicarbonate of soda to work with. Then I have five large eggs, two teaspoons of vanilla extract, one teaspoon of almond extract, two eight ounce tubs, they're about 227 grams each of these, I'm calling these semi-dried pineapple. I actually looked for candy pineapple, but I didn't find any. This should be okay. And then I have two cups, which is about five ounces or 140 grams of shredded coconut. I have some extra coconut, maybe a half a cup and maybe a quarter cup of raw sugar. I'm gonna be using these in the last step before I bake to garnish my biscotti before I put them in the oven. And hopefully that will work out because this is an experiment. So those are my ingredients for making my, let's call it Hawaiian biscotti, my pineapple coconut biscotti. I'm going to combine my dry ingredients first. So there's my flour and my sugar. Salt baking soda and baking powder. And then using a whisk, just basically mix this up. This doesn't have to be too fussy. Okay, those are my dry, dry ingredients. Let's do the wet ingredients next. You heard me mention that I'm starting with five eggs. One of the eggs is going to be used for making an egg wash when I get ready to garnish with the raw sugar and the coconut. I'm only going to start off with three eggs. Typically in this recipe I need four inside, but I like to start off with not enough and then add as I need to. And there's my vanilla extract and my almond extract. Oh, those almond, that almond extract smells so good. The kitchen is just full of fragrance from almond extract. Okay, so those are my wet ingredients. I'm ready to start grinding up my um, pineapple, which is going to be a lot of fun. What I am anticipating here is that my pineapple will stick to the blades 
of my food processor. I'm not going to put all this in, I'll explain that in a minute. So, to hopefully to free things up a little bit, I'm going to put my oats and most of my, maybe three quarters of my coconut in there. Oh, I know what I wanted to do. I like to cover this with a little bit of a barrier so that it doesn't make a mess of my lid. One less thing to wash. This is what guys do because we don't like to clean things up. Get that in place. That's in place. All right, let's chop this up. Well, that looks very nice. Okay. Now, I'm going to put the rest of my, my pineapple in because I don't want to chop this up as much. I want to have some pineapple, fairly large chunks, in my biscotti because it'll add some visual interest. So I'm just going to chop this a little bit. And that should be good enough. Okay. That looks good. I, I am really... Oh, I gotta taste this. I just have to taste this. Oh. <laughs> that is gonna be so good. That is really sweet. That is gonna be delicious. All right, I'm going to add my wet ingredients to this bowl. I can tell by looking at it already, just looking at the amount here, that I'm going to need that extra egg. I usually do, just as a precaution. I don't put it in quite yet. I just know with 20 ounces of flour, I'm going to need four eggs in this mixture. All right, I'm going to put my coconut in there. And my cut up, ground up, chopped up, processed up pineapple. This is a gooey, sticky mess. I'm not going to be able to get it all out of there. So that's for those who want to lick the bowl. Using some of my flour here to protect my fingers. If you've never made biscotti before, be prepared because it's a sticky mess. But that's the consistency you want. You want it to be sticky. I've been worried about it all morning because the water has been turned off. They're fixing something in the trailer park. And what am I going to do if my hands are all sticky? But so far we've got water again. It's not running real great, but it's running. Okay. I'm going to put this onto my surface here. Ah, nice big floury mess. And then I have to start kneading that together. But I'm going to need to readjust the camera first, so I'll be with you in just a moment. I can pretty much guarantee that this mass is going to need an additional egg. It always does. But I try to get combined as much as I can first, even when I put in the fourth egg it'll look as though it's not going to come together. But it always does. My plastic scraper here, that's actually a glue spreader. 
I thought I might have bought this scraper at a art supply store, but I, I was in the big builder's warehouse store. And I saw them in there and thought, okay, that's where I got it, in the big warehouse store. Okay. I'm pretty much content that that's going to need another egg. This is where I get crumbs all over the floor, and when I wish I had a dog, so I could say, good boy, good boy, eat the crumbs off the floor. It's too bad you can't do that with children. <laughs> That'll get me in trouble. Okay, I'm going to have to knead this all together, and basically you just force this together. It does come together. And it will be a sticky mess. It always is. But this takes, oh, I don't know, a good five minutes or so to get it all kneaded together. But you'll see, it will come together. Okay, check that out. That has all come together into a nice sticky mass. That's what I want. This is going to be very sticky to work with. So usually when you shape these into loaves, it's easiest just to wet your hands. So I'm going to set aside a bowl of water. If my hands look beat up, it's because I was, I build my own computers too. And I was making a metal frame, a couple of them. One to hold hard disks in a different configuration, and another to put a fan where I felt as though one was really needed because I had one hard disk that was getting way too warm. Okay, I need to rinse my hands here. Hopefully we have running water. Yes, we do. And then I'll start shaping these into my loaves for making my biscotti. I have some water here to wet my hands. Usually I don't wet my hands when I work with this dough, but I could tell by how it felt that this is going to be very sticky. So it will help if I wet my hands. I'm going to be putting this on a baking sheet that I've lined with a silicone baking liner. You don't have to do that. You can use parchment paper or just grease your baking sheet well. And I'm going to shake this kind of into a half round that's just long enough to fit on my baking sheet. So I want it a little bit flat. Okay, I think that looks good. Separate this as best I can. It is sticky. Okay. Place that on the baking sheet. Like so, and then do the other one. Again, wet my hands. I can see I have some larger pieces of, whoops, some larger pieces of pineapple in this dough, and that's what I want. See, there's one right there because those larger pieces inside the sliced biscotti will add some kind of visual appeal, if you will. To the sliced biscotti. 
Okay, I think that's good enough. Let's see if I can just turn this over onto my hands and then drop it onto the baking sheet. Okay, my next thing is to get my oven warmed up and I will be garnishing that before I bake it. I beat up an egg here to make an egg wash. Normally I beat it up with a little bit of water, but I want this to be a little bit on the thick side because I've got a lot of stuff to put on top. So maybe a thicker egg wash will help me to hold all the stuff together. That's a little too thick. Okay. And then I want to sprinkle it with some raw sugar and then put some of my coconut on top. I'm hoping this coconut will, to will toast in the oven. And speaking of the oven, I heated my oven, or it is heating up now, to 350 degrees. I'm patting this into my egg wash to get it to hopefully stick. Heating my oven to 350 degrees, and these are going to bake 30 to 35 minutes. I'll check them to see how well brown they are. If I think they need a little bit more, I'll go to 40 minutes. But usually 35, 30 to 35 minutes is enough. Okay, that looks good. These are ready to go into the oven. Okay, here is my biscotti fresh from the oven. I got a little bit of browning on top with that coconut. Perfect, so now what I need to do is let this cool for about 15 or 20 minutes and then I'll be ready to slice it at an angle into the finished biscotti. In the meantime, I have cooled my oven down a little bit. I've ch lowered the temperature to 275 degrees because that's the temperature at which the cut biscotti has to dry out. All right, this has had a chance to cool a little bit. It's still warm, but it'll be comfortable to handle. That end piece is for nibbles. I'm slicing these at about, I don't know, three-eighths of an inch thick at an angle. And then I'm going to place these on my cookie sheet again and put them back in the 275 degree oven to dry them out a little bit. They're probably going to be chewy rather than dry like typical biscotti, and that'll be because of the pineapple. They'll sit in the 275 degree oven for about 45 minutes. Okay, there they are all sliced. I laid them out on my cookie sheet with space in between so that these can dry out. So again, these go back to the oven at 275 degrees and I want to dry these out for at least 45 minutes. Here is my final biscotti after being in the oven for 45 minutes. I got some additional browning on the um, coconut. Let me just See what this feels like. It's a little bit springy. I think because of the, the uh, pineapple inside, these are going to be chewy biscotti. So if you like chewy biscotti, these could be ideal. I'm going to let these cool now, cool down quite a bit, maybe a good 20 minutes. Then I'm going to make a cup of coffee and see how they taste. There they are, a platter full of pineapple and coconut biscotti. I had one left over as I plated all these things, so I thought, well, I'll just stick that in the middle and I'll call this a 
tribute to Hawaii's volcanoes. I have brewed my cup of coffee, so the last step is to see how good they taste. All right, I've got my coffee ready. Some biscotti. I did munch on one of these just to see if they were as chewy as I thought they might be. They aren't. They're nice and dry. So they do need coffee, which is the way I like my biscotti. I don't like them like cookies. Oh. Wow, that is delicious. That is so good. Neither flavor, neither the coconut nor the pineapple overpowers the other. It's like a, I just happened to hit it right. It's a great balance. Okay. Perfect. Excuse me. I'm going to go enjoy my biscotti and coffee. For a printable PDF copy of this recipe with step-by-step -step photographs, visit the White Trash Cooking website and look on the home page or in the recipe archive.